testing, one, two, three, testing.
streaming. Okay, members, good evening and welcome along to our council meeting tonight, Monday the 24th of April, uh, our last one of the full mandate and the full term. And uh, we just want to welcome each one along to our meeting tonight. Members, just before we start our business tonight, just a couple of very sad uh, open announcements. Uh, we just want to uh, mention the, the sad and, uh, death of Glenn Montgomery from Portadown and road traffic accident, and also to the sad death of Ben Gillis from Tandragee uh, and road traffic accident. I know many of you know the connections uh, with these uh, two young lives that have been lost. Uh, ben was a member of staff at our Orchard Leisure Centre. And uh, I want to just put on record our condolences to the families of both these uh, young men and certainly we'll be corresponding with those at a later stage. And Councillor Barry would like to come in. Thank, thank you, Lord, Lord Mayor, on giving me the opportunity, uh, as you have quite rightly stated the sad and tragic deaths of two two young lads. I didn't have the pleasure of knowing Glenn, but a new young Ben Gillis and uh, his mother is actually the principal of the primary school where my children attend. And I know his father, Colin, for, for many years locally as well. And obviously on behalf of the community uh, and, and indeed the council, I would like to express our deepest sincere sympathies to Ben's parents, grandparents and wider family circle, but most of all as well, which sometimes is forgotten in times like this, is his many, many band of friends that he had, especially within the football fraternity. Ben was a keen footballer and in fact at his home yesterday, Hanover Football Club, to which he played for, I had a guard of honour at his home and there was a sea of football Jerseys at the, the the funeral yesterday in the Church of Ireland was was packed to capacity. This obviously has had a very deep effect on the community, not only in Tanrigi, but a lot further afield. And as you said, he uh, worked in Orchard Leisure Centre and many of the staff there who I spoke to at the funeral and indeed at the home at the wake that night, many of them were deeply affected by the tragic and sudden death of Ben uh, so on, 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 on behalf of the community, uh, obviously we would continue to offer prayerful support at this time. It's when that door closes on the evening of the funeral is when things will get really tough. And I have no doubt that the community in Tandragee and further afield will put their arms of love and prayer around the Gillis family at this time. Uh, and obviously they value the prayers of everybody at this time because Colin has lost a dear son and... Lynn has lost her son, but the grandparents also have been very deeply affected because they looked after him when the parents were at work and took them to football and took them to school. So obviously it's an impact on them, but especially the young people as well. So thank you very much. And I know you will pass on your written sympathies. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barry. Alderman Wilson. Yeah, it's really just to be associated with those remarks from behalf of our party group in here as well, and uh, live not too far from the Gillis family also. And it is just, there's no words to describe the pain and, and suffering that they'll be experiencing at this time. Um, it's such a tragedy just for someone so young. Um, and we think of the Montgomery family as well. There are no words just that can come close to describing the loss. and. And as, as Councillor Barry has said, amongst the wider family circle as well, it'll be felt so acutely. So we just remember them in our thoughts and prayers at this time. And I know you will convey that in your letters to them. And thank you. Thank you, uh, Alderman Wilson. Councillor Duffy. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no, I want to concur with everything that's said. The loss of two young lives is tragic at any time of the year. And it's just heart goes out to them. And sympathy and prayers from our party too. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Alderman Baxter. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And just to be associated with the comments and our parties, as Alderman Wilson said, thoughts and prayers are with the family. And this isn't something I normally do, um, Lord Mayor, but just... We're talking about the death of young people. Um, Donald Clooney, as you know, is quite a small rural village. And just over the last couple of days, we've had a couple of young ladies who have 
very tragically um, lost their lives as well, died um, <clears throat> of natural causes as well. And it's just really, just to say on record, we put our thoughts and our prayers out to those two young families because it's quite shocking for the community. Um, two, young, two, two young ladies just in their 30s, um, one with a, a couple of small children as well, so just to the families of um, Vicky McCracken and Debbie White, um, who had moved on recently, I think, um, Vicky had just moved recently to Marlin and Debbie over to Warrenstein. Um, but just it struck me when we're talking about the death of young people that we, we had this tragedy over the last few days as well, and it just seems to be we're shrouded just in, in, in gloom over the village this last few days as well. So I just wanted to publicly say and put on record our sympathies to those families as well as the um, the ones that have already been discussed. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Baxter. Uh, Councillor McNeil. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Mayor, and just on behalf of our party, I wish to express sympathy to both families. Len's death especially has touched so many young people in the community, and the large turnout at the funeral expressed how well th thought the family are held in the community, and also to express a, our wishes to the emergency service that attended that accident, and also to young Ben's as well. So, and our thoughts are with the family. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McNeil and Councillor Labrie. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, just on behalf of my own party group and to express our condolences to the families of Glenn and Ben, their lives taken so tragically at such an early age, and to their, all our staff as well, particularly the Orchard Leisure Centre, who have been affected. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Larry. Alderman Spears. <clears throat> Lord Mayor, uh, thanks indeed for giving me the opportunity to speak on this particular tragic, tragic matter. Uh, I have had the privilege of knowing the Gillis family for many, many years. Uh, they're a well-known, highly respected family in the Tandragi area. And when this type of thing visits a family, uh, there is no end to the sorrow that it brings. And indeed, uh, the Montgomery family, I didn't know that young lad. Uh, I suspect I know members of his family. I know there are Montgomery's in that part of the world. And uh, I have no doubt that equally the tragic happening of that tragic death of a young man and the sorrow that brings to a family, that would be parents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, granny, granda, whatever, it is really unthinkable place to be in terms of the tragedy and how one comes to terms with a situation like that, uh, such mm -hmm. a tragic event. So on behalf of myself and indeed uh, Ulster Union's party, I extend to all those families our heartfelt, sincere uh, sympathy at this very, very tragic time and just trust and pray that things will, the Lord will sustain them as they, they move forward uh, in no doubt what is a very, very difficult battle to fight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Alderman Spears and Councillor Kyle Savage. Thank you, Lord Mayor. <clears throat> yeah, as we all know, and has been said here already, but our community has been tinged with sadness at the loss of so many young people there, you know, the Montgomery family and the Hillis family and that, and the connections through the Young Farmers Association and all. Our thoughts and prayers go out them, but <clears throat> just if I may add, and as already has been said by Alderman Baxter about uh, Vicky McCracken and Debbie White, and I know Debbie would have been a regular attender at some of the community events that we would have done in Donald Cloney. And it's just our thoughts and prayers going out to those families and letting them know that we as a councillor are thinking of them at this time and are, again, our thoughts and prayers are with all those. So, that, so thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Sandwich and Councillor Mitre.
Yes, uh, thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, I would just like to thank you for passing um, on condolences to the families um, of both um, young individuals who have tragically lost their lives. Um, I would also just like to put on record my uh, sympathies to the family of Ben Gillis, um, and particularly as a councillor representing Portadown DEA. Um, I know the impact this has had um, on his teammates at Hanover Football Club and across the local community, um, and indeed to the family of um, Glenn Montgomery following his tragic and untimely passing. Um, it is heartbreaking to see um, families bereft once again. And um, I, such tragic circumstances have left a, um, a hole in the hearts of many across um, the local community. Thank you, Councillor Midry. Thank you, members. Okay, members, agenda item one, apologies. Is there any apologies from the floor? I'd firstly record an apology for Chief Executive tonight, who is unable to be in attendance. Uh, any other apologies from the floor? I have another one from Councillor Ian Wilson as well. No other apologies. Okay, members, thank you. Agenda item 2.1, we're going to seek a proposal and seconder for the minutes of the council meeting held on the 27th of March. 2023 to be taken and read and approved as a correct record. I have a proposer for the council minutes of the meeting. Councillor O'Hanlon. And we have a seconder. Councillor Stephen Midray. Okay, members, we all agreed. Agreed. Councillor O'Hanlon, you're looking in. And thank you, Lord Mayor. Just in relation to the second last item in the minutes, the C143-2023, uh, it raised the issue about the, the footpaths in Armagh City. Uh, and it's just, I, I know uh, uh, Jonathan had hoped to meet uh, Kieran McKenna or someone from road service and be asked if that would get an update in relation to that. Uh, I, I've had uh, contact even as late as this evening to say that uh, another young lady had slipped and fell on the, the footpaths in Scott Street in Armagh. And so it's just if that meeting hasn't already been held, if we could include that item on the agenda, please. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. I'm sure John will be able to be out. Thank you. Okay, members, we're all agreed. Thank you. Members, agenda item three, declaration of interest. If there's any anyone to make now, or if they want to take them in the normal route as we go through, that's fine. Thank you. Agenda item 4.1, could we seek a proposal or second for the minutes of the Planning and Regulatory Services Committee held on the 5th of April to be taken and read as a correct record? And Alderman Wilson, you're our chair. Yeah, happy to propose. Thank you. You and who is seconder, Councillor uh, Savage. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm happy to second the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Savage. And members, we all agreed that are in the planning committee. We agreed. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Agenda item 4.2, the minutes of governance, resources, and strategy committee held on the 6th of April to be taken away as a fact record on our chairman as Alderman Mudre. Happy to propose, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Mudry, and our Vice Chair, Alderman Twible. And again, uh, Lord Mayor, happy to second the minutes. Thank you, Alderman Twible and Councillor Tinsley. Chair, sorry, too quick. Chair, just a very quick one because we've no leisure services committee. It's just um, this afternoon it was drawn to my attention that we have something called a dog run around the lakes. I'm not sure if any of the other councils are aware of it, but I actually haven't been. Um, but I was approached today when I was on the doors um, and seemingly the public pay to use it, um, but it has become extremely unkept. Um, just fallen into a state of disrepair is what I'm told, um, that there's not even a decent latch to keep the gate closed. And I just want to raise it tonight. I don't know what way Perda works with our council officers and so on, but just wanted to raise it tonight that if someone could take a wee look into that um, and just see what the problem is. And, and seemingly there's new key holders, gets new keys every April. So it's it sounds a bit bizarre, but maybe someone could look into it and perhaps have a report um, brought to Leisure Services Committee for June, if that's possible. Okay, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Councillor. I'm sure Jonathan can look into that and see. Thank you. I actually do know where it is. I walked past it and wonder what it was one time. There's quite a bit of, of uh, metal and stuff there for dogs running up and down. It's quite a good thing there. So, okay, members, we had a proposal in a second. We all agreed. Agreed. 
Agreed, yep. Thank you. Okay, members, agenda item five, and Jonathan's going to take us through 5.1, uh, Bells Amusements Fund Fair. Jonathan, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members, uh, the report before you tonight is in relation to a request from Bells Amusement Fund Fair. Members, the details in the report, but in essence, members, Bells is looking to occupy uh, an area of Solitary Park between the 7th uh, to the 21st of June in relation to uh, this particular request. Uh, certainly happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Alderman Baxter. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm happy to um, propose. Thank you. And do we have a seconder? Alderman Barr. Happy to second, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Michael. Members, you all agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Okay, member, agenda in 5.2. I will ask our Deputy Chief Executive to take us through that one. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and good evening, members. Um, this report is about legacy council portraits. And the background is that the council is the custodian of portraits for the former Lord Mayors, Mayors and Chairmen of the three legacy councils. The options on the course of action to be taken have been considered over the past couple of years and was shared again with party leaders last week. Party leaders were asked to obtain the views of their colleagues on the suggestion that an album be produced for display in each of the three main buildings and or are the display of the original portraits in each of the three main buildings. And you will see in that report um, plans to continue with a digital copy of the legacy portraits. Um, but the particular options then that are for consideration this evening are number one, to produce an album containing copies of the portraits of the former Lord Mayors or Mayors and Chairmen of the three legacy councils for display at the Palace Armagh. Banbridge Civic Building and the Craigavon Civic Centre. This would also include the provision of an online archive of portraits which would be available to the public. And the second is to provide a wall-mounted display in each of the legacy council buildings with a photo of each legacy Lord Mayor, Mayor or Chairman and a short inscription detailing their name and the years that they held office. And irrespective of the options that are presented, the original portraits would be offered to the families concerned. Um, so the recommendation this evening really is for elected members to provide a decision on what council should do with those portraits from the three legacy councils. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon and Alderman Spears. Lord Mayor, uh, first of all, I thank uh, Charlene for that, uh, taking us through that report, which is, as has already been said, was tabled at the uh, party group leaders last week. This is something that I uh, have been working on, so to speak. I have spoken to a number of the families of former uh, chairmen, mayors of indeed all three councils and uh, it's something that I uh, felt that was appropriate to endeavour to solve in a satisfactory way uh, prior to uh, my departure from, from council uh, which is uh, no doubt imminent and uh, I have uh, the greatest possible pleasure in proposing I think what has been uh, suggested is a reasonable the way it's a fairly unobtrusive way uh, doesn't occupy a lot of space but yet in all it secures uh, the history of uh, not only the people involved but indeed the the areas in in the respective areas so i have a pleasure in proposing that we adopt this report now, I know different members had maybe slightly different views uh, in relation to this, spoke to some sense, and uh, I would just appeal to members to uh, be mindful of the fact that this is the last meeting of this council, and it certainly has been the tenor of our activity in this council, whereby we have 
tried to work our way through things in a, in a, in a positive um, uh, workmanship uh, like manner. And I think in, in this particular case, it, I believe, would be an in interest of us all if that was a passed in that particular manner. So I so propose that we uh, accept the report. Thank you. Thank you, Honour Spears. Honour, can I just clarify, you're proposing one of the options or two of the options? Proposing? Are you proposing? So there's a wall mounted display on the albums. Is it wall mounted display or? So I, I probably would need, I'll bring another one back to see what he's. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think I've no proposal as the wall mounted display on the books at Alderman. I need to know the proposal. I'm going to ask that, but I'm trying to establish it here. We'll just try again here. We'll just check. Is it the wall mounted display on the books? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's both the proposal is that both those options are taken. Okay. I'll remember back, sir. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, that they have to be dealt with. And I think it's, it's on the table for, for a long time. So um, it was always agreed that something would be done. So. It's good to see it here tonight, and I'm happy to second. Thank you, Alderman Baxter. Okay, members, we have a proposer and a seconder that we do both that's on this here. Is there Councillor Magal? Thank you, Lord Mayor. We had a long discussion about this at party leaders, where the discussion was about the wall-mounted display as the option. Um, for reasons we, we, we well rehearsed at party leaders, it wasn't something we could support. We favoured the digital archive and returning the portraits to the families. So, no, we wouldn't agree to their proposal, which is now double what was agreed at, or talked about at party leaders, you know. Thank you, Councillor Michael. I noticed in the bottom of this, no matter which options here, the original prospect are going back to families concerned. So, that is still part of this one. Councillor Delavery. Good Lord Mayor, thank you. Um, I don't want to get an entire row over this issue, so I'll, I'll temper my remarks for a change. Um, but I think the proposal from the old student is party, I think, to be honest, maybe need to get the priority straight here, given the issue that's being raised and the situation Council's in. I think the proposal from Alderman Spears, which, as is noted in the report, is an unbudgeted proposal. And I think the more appropriate way to proceed would be uh, the option one with the album and um, digitalized the records and given the originals to the families as I believe it recognizes the history of the legacy bars uh, in a financially prudent way. So I'd, I'd maybe all of them consider just going down the album route option to try and get a bit of support for all in the, the wall mounted option. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Holland. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, and, you know, others have said there was quite a discussion and where the discussion went to was in relation to, to wall panels and uh, uh, and the different options. And whilst the, the report details the £600, that is for books. That doesn't state then how much for panels. It doesn't state uh, if that's for one book or three books. Uh, so our own preference would be to continue with the proposal for um, uh, the digital archive and return the portraits to the families. Thank you. Okay, members, so we're not agreed on the original proposal here from, so we'll put it to vote then of Alderman Spears for both. Uh, just, members, just for clarity, it says in this original, in both these original portraits are going back to the families concerned. So just so we know that that is the case. So our, we're going to vote now then, members, on... Uh, Alderman Spears has proposed that we consideration the following in summary. So both options. So everybody clear what we're voting on? If we're supporting that, yeah. Okay, members. So okay. Okay, so Alderman Anderson. Okay. 
Yes, Lord Mayor. Alderman Barr. Yes, Lord Mayor. Alderman Baxter. Yes. Councillor Barrett. Yes. Alderman Burns. Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Fergal Donnelly. Yes, no, Lord Mayor. Jackie Donnelly? No, Mayor. Councillor Duffy? No, Lord Mayor. Councillor Flaggerty? Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Hockey? Okay, Councillor Hockey is no longer there. Councillor Hockey? No, Lord. Councillor Johnson? No, Lord. Mark. Alderman Kennedy? Yes, Lord. Mark. Councillor Larkham? No, no, no. Okay. Councillor Lavery? No, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Councillor McCauley? Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Magal? No. Councillor Magalinton? No, Lord Mayor. Councillor McGowan? No. Councillor McElrath? Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor McKinstry? Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor McNally? Councillor McNeil? No, Lord Mayor. Alderman Moodry? Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Moodry? <laughs> yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Nelson? No. Okay. Councillor Nicholson? Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor O'Hanlon? No, Lord Mayor. Councillor O'Neill? No, Lord Mayor. Councillor Pope? Uh, no, Lord Mayor. Alderman Rankin? Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Kevin Savage. No, Lord Mayor. Councillor Kyle Savage. Yes, Lord Mayor. Alderman Spears. Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Tinsley? Yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Tuman? No, Lord Mayor. Alderman Twybel? Yes, Lord Mayor. Alderman Wilson. Yes, 
Yes, Lord Mayor. Commissioner Wilson's an apology. Deputy Lord Mayor. Yes, Lord Mayor. Self, yes. Okay. Our members. Okay, members, uh, 21 voting yes and 14 voting no. So it is opposed and seconded and three that we do both there. Okay, members, thank you. Members, agenda item six, our schedule of correspondence uh, with four items for noting. And uh, we can take on block uh, for noting is agenda item 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, and 6.4. Members, are we agreed to note? Agreed to note. Thank you, members. Okay, agenda item seven, uh, three items for approval in this year, schedule of documents for current corporate seal. And uh, we can take them on block as well. Uh, agenda item 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3. We have a proposer and a seconder. Alderman Burns proposed, and we have a seconder. Councillor Lavery. Okay, members, we all agreed. Great, thank you. Okay, members, we're now gonna go into confidential business. Uh, can I seek a proposer and a seconder to go into committee for consideration of the confidential items of business? Councillor McNeil and Councillor Alderman Spears. Okay, members and listeners to the audio feed in, in accordance with the Schedule 6 of the Local Government Act, we are now moving into confidential session of the Council. This means that we'll be turning off the public audio feed of the meeting. This will be returned when the meeting is restarted. Can I ask ICT officers to please turn off the audio feed and confirm for me when the confidential section of this meeting can proceed.
second session. Thank you. Okay, members, our first item of AOB is Councillor O'Hanlon. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, and uh, I'll be very brief. Um, Lord Mayor, I've been approached by a number of families in uh, the Armagh area who have lost loved ones during the COVID pandemic. Uh, they're part of a wider group uh, called Memory Stones of Love, uh, and they want to put uh, mem uh, benches and trees similar to what we suppose we had an application earlier on, but I think uh, other local authorities across the north are, uh, are leading on this and putting a bench and a tree in, the, in their various public parks. It commemorates those who died from COVID, but also though it's a, an acknowledgement to those families who lost a loved one during that time and whenever there was restrictions uh, and that they couldn't have what we would call a, a normal uh, or traditional uh, Christian burial or funeral uh, with neighbours, family and friends there. Um, they've, uh, as I said, they've, in, I think it's Lisbon and Castlereagh and Belfast have already forwarded uh, in terms of benches and trees in a number of locations throughout the area. And maybe in each of our legacy areas, if that could be considered. So one in Armagh, Bambridge and Craigavon. Uh, and just ask that officers take a look at it and come back to the future meeting of council with a proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Yes, I've also been approached in the last week about this thing, so glad to hear it for Arma, Bambridge and Galvin. Well, certainly, officer will bring that back in, hopefully in June. Uh, there. Thank you. Okay, our next item is Councillor McAlinton. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And again, members, I'll make no apologies for raising this issue, this issue again. And it's with deep frustration and disappointment that the uh, I want my remarks, my, my remarks noted about the toilet facilities at Oxford Island. Um, having lobbied for the toilets beside the play park for near on three years, I'm still receiving the same response, a bot surveys. I totally understand and respect our officers, officers advice with the need to protect our wildlife, but we must have adequate toilet facilities to, to accommodate the large number of people visiting the visiting our sites. At the weekend, I, was, I witnessed a young lady with a young child coming out of the old derelict buildings going to the toilet. I went over to the, the Discovery Centre and those toilets were out of order. And it's now getting beyond ridiculous that having spent hundreds of thousands of pounds on new facilities, we can't provide simple toilet facilities. So whatever happens on the 18th of May going forward, I hope Oxford Island is still on the agenda and whoever takes up the mantle, just to keep it in the, keep it in the spotlight. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Mr. Magdalene, and certainly it's something we'll need to be looked at again for obviously our facilities now. We're putting a lot of work into improving them, new play parks and stuff, so it is something that we'll have to be looked at moving forward. Councillor Flaggerty. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'll be brief. I fully support you, Councillor McAlinden, on this about Oxford Island. You know where I come from on it. Um, you're entirely correct in what you say. There is no point in us building these state-of-the-art uh, play parks uh, without the matching facilities. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. And given, given that there is a brand spank new piece of kit going in, the first of its kind in this borough, uh, an accessible city, so I can't wait to see it. I am, I am down about this. But because it's been so hard fought for, um, and yet we don't have adequate parking, we don't have adequate disabled parking, and we do not have the toilet and facilities. So we're encouraging these families and children to go, and what do they do when they're there? I'll tell you, they don't go. So you can make, you can take it as a promise from me and my colleagues who, who are able to return afterwards. We will take this one on with you, Councillor McAllen, absolutely. Thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Okay, members, uh, we now just want to mention this is our last full council meeting. It's my last council meeting, uh, full council meeting, uh, and it's also the last full council meeting to seven members of our, of our chamber uh, tonight. It could be the last for maybe more than seven, but uh, so we don't take it for granted, but it is definitely there's seven who have declared that they are not going to run again this election. Uh, so members, I was going to say it is with sadness to bid them a fond farewell, but if they keep us here at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, we'll leave the sadness bit off it and we'll just bid them farewell. But only joking members, so there is, as I said, seven 
uh, here that are not going again. I just want to mention them each by name. Councillor Jackie Donnelly has been four years on. Councillor Bram Pope, who's been four years. Councillor Thomas Larkham, who's been four years. Uh, we then have... Uh, thank you very much. We then have Councillor Darren McNally, who is not uh, seeking re-election again, who's 15 years, I believe. And we've also then Alderman Sidney Anderson, who has uh, a combined total of 16 years, four in this council and 12 previous. Uh, and then we go to the big hitters who have 30 years, Alderman Twible, and obviously Alderman Jim Spears, who I'm sure some of you won't know this, but he's 46 years, I think, <laughs> he's been here. Uh, it's <laughs> never maybe been mentioned too often, but I think we've, uh, we certainly want to do want to wish each of you very well as you uh, go to life outside of council, and you've all had it before, and you will enjoy it. Always, uh, to each and every one of you, I want to send you my good wishes. Uh, certainly as Lord Mayor, and on behalf of all our council colleagues here tonight uh, on your retirement from council. Uh, I know, uh, and we all know in this chamber tonight, being a councillor is a very, very hard job, uh, which can often go on, recognise a lot of the work that goes on. So I hope you've all enjoyed your time in council, whether it's been previous legacy councils and ABC, or whether it has been just ABC, uh, whether you've been here a long time or a short time, I know each one of you will have tried your best to make a difference for the area you represent, and we want to thank you uh, and just wish you well and your families well as you uh, as you progress on uh, after the 18th of May. Uh, you won't have the sweat of standing there leaning over like we all do. It's a bit like sitting here watching people waiting for their face to come on the screen. I got there. It reminds me of some leaning over a barrier, counting tallies and looking around and seeing how we're getting on and hearing what's going on. But on behalf of all the members here, could I wish all those seven that are not returning well, uh, could I wish them well on behalf of our staff, which they've asked me to pass on as well, and to thank you all for your service to our council. I suppose I'd just like to make a bit of a more of reference, uh, Councillor McNally, you have 15 years, you were first co-opted to the Armagh City and District Council back in 2008. And I don't think you're on the meeting tonight, but I'm sure your colleagues will pass on our best wishes. Uh, and then 15 years in total service. Again, uh, quite a long time. We then have Alderman Anderson, who's here. Alderman Anderson, who I would probably know the best of the councillors that are leaving, and has told me many fond stories about his days in Craig Avon, uh, and some of the highlights and some of the some of the things that went on there. But Alderman Anderson, uh, you were obviously on this council since 2019. Prior to that, uh, you've been on Craig Avon Council from 2001 to 2013, uh, to which you served as Deputy Lord Mayor in 2002 and three, and moved on to Mayor in 2008 and nine. Uh, Sydney, I personally, and on behalf of all the council, want to wish you well as in your uh, time of retirement as it comes along. I know you'll not be a stranger and you'll be kept busy and you'll be keeping us right, uh, but you were the forefront to many, many issues in your time in Craig Avon, and we do hope you've also enjoyed your time here on the benches and on our party, we have really appreciated you, Sydney. So we wish you well for the future. Uh, moving on then, Alderman Tribal, I uh, just want to say we wish you well in your retirement and as you move forward. Uh, 30 years, 1993, uh, you joined a council and have served then. We're Mur and Craig Alvin Council, 1997 to 98, and also again, 2006 and seven. Uh, with a spell in as Deputy Mayor after that, it was 2007, 2008. Uh, Alderman Tribal, as we all know, and I've been at quite a few events with him this year, and you don't go to an event that somebody doesn't come up and say, he was my teacher. Mm -hmm. hey, I met him, he taught me many years ago. Uh, obviously, Vice Principal of Killigme in Junior High. Uh, so we always had a keen interest in our education and development of our young people throughout our borough and the area we represented. I uh, suppose in more recent years, you've been the chair of the South Lakes Leisure Committee and, and the project board there, which a lot of work went into. And uh, on behalf of all the members, again, the staff and all, we want to wish you well in your time of retirement and uh, every blessing for health and strength that you retire also. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Only joking. Uh, we have now come to the man who's been here 46 years, Alderman Spears. Uh, it is hard to know where to begin when we mention Alderman Spears. And then I think, well, it's not that hard because we've heard quite a bit about your tenure. Uh, someone someone said to me, uh, remind Alderman Spears tonight how long you're allowed to speak and uh, the amount of time. But we'll not go to standing orders just yet on this one tonight. But Alderman Spears, first elected over 46 years ago uh, uh, and service with Armagh District Council and then to Armagh City and District Council and then finally to Armagh City, Bambridge and Gravenberg Council. Uh, you've had many, many achievements during your service and your council service. I think one of the first times I met you, you done your trademark, you grabbed me by the elbow as we walked into a function and said, well, young Greenfield, what do you think of me? And I remember looking at you saying, despite what everybody says, I think you're not too bad. Uh, and you let go of me very quickly and let me go. But uh, certainly, Alderman Spears, we have uh, known you over the time. You've always been uh, at 
is I don't think you missed too many meetings. You're always there. You've been a party leader for a considerable amount of time in your time in council, and certainly through some very more difficult times in our history that you've been there and led your group and led your party. Uh, you also were a mayor uh, in, back in, in 1996 to 97, and then the Lord, uh, Lord Mayor in Armagh in 2010, 2011. So we want to also wish you uh, all the very best as you come to this time of retirement. It's been muted for the last year that you were retiring and the amount of people that I think it was a book open to say he'll probably not retire and he will retire. I'm not sure, but the time has come as you're now retiring. I just interesting thinking that in 1999, you were awarded an MBE for your services to local government. You got the MBE for service to local government over 20 years ago. So you've done quite a bit more since then. Uh, so again, on behalf of all the members, our staff and everyone here tonight, we want to wish you a very, very uh, long and happy retirement and to thank you for all the work that you've put into council. So 46 years between Alderman Anderson, Alderman Twybel and Alderman Spears, I think there's something like 90 something years of experience and uh, work put into local government and councils. So we do want to thank you all very much for your long uh, service and longevity. So I'm going to open the floor up maybe to our party leaders first if they wanted to make mention particular to their own. We'll try and do it all together. Uh, uh, each one, and obviously your own members and those others. So, who would like to go first tonight? Alderman Baxter. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, and you've really covered, just to be associated with your comments, you've really covered a lot of the stuff that, that all those that are, that are leaving have done over the years. <laughs> I could say plenty about uh, about each, each of the people that are leaving, but I, I will start with. My own colleague, Alderman Anderson, I first came on to Craigavon Council. It was 2011. Um, and I really was very, very green. And I know the reputation of Craigavon Council to those that didn't serve. Maybe, <clears throat> well, I think it was maybe better proportion as well, because Craigavon Council was a great learning curve for me as a young councillor who had never really spoken in public, who really didn't know what he was doing. Um, and I came in and I sat just down about here on this side of the chamber. And to my left hand side was um, Alderman Anderson, right hand side was Alderman Moutry, who at the time were both MLAs, who at the time would have sent you a tax message and said, right, there's a vote coming later on. We're in a way from Stormont. You might stand your hind legs there. And I filibustered for a few minutes to we get there for an important vote. Um, but I do, I do joke, of course, but I would never do anything like that. Um, <laughs> But you know what? We, we learned we learned from the best. What you have with Alderman Anderson, first and foremost, as a family man, and you can see that even lately when you see any photographs and stuff on social media and all now with his with his grandchildren at the football, albeit it's usually at Porta Down and he hasn't made his way across. I don't think he will at this stage. Well, he might have to next season, but well, we'll not go down that we'll not go down that road tonight. But first and foremost, a, a family man. If I could pay tribute to. His long-suffering wife Brenda and his children and his grandchildren, indeed, who will be glad to have um, Sydney back and have Sydney full time. Um, but secondly, I suppose Sydney is a old-school, true unionist, and his unionist principles always came first when it came to anything in this chamber. Um, and as a proud orange man as well, um, just an old-school, old-school unionist who was always true to his values and always upheld all those moral issues and all those things that him and his community felt dear and always stuck up for the rural area that he represented. Um, whenever I was mayor in 2014, I remember that I invited it to Scott Street. Now, in my ignorance, I thought Scott Street was a street off Portadown somewhere. I didn't realise it was a it was a, a rural area of, um, off Portadown. And when I went to it, a small enclave of houses, but as you walk around it, you've seen the provision that was delivered by Sydney Anderson. There's a farm there that you have to walk through to get to a fantastic um, 2G pitch. Um, the, the community group there, the youth club, and all those things that were built was largely down to the hard work and persistence um, of Alderman Anderson. Um, so I just want to pay tribute on behalf um, of our party to Alderman Anderson as he steps down after a long and colourful career. And I don't know if he'll give you any stories about in the old days, even before I got there, but there's there's some quite a few that, that stick out in memory, and it's maybe not for the chamber this evening, but certainly 
if you ever hear those stories, I think you have to look back and smile. But I think anybody in those days, um, when you first came on to council, um, in, in those days, in, in dark times in this country, and I think this goes for all the elected representatives um, here tonight that, that are leaving, they stood for council in those days. And even now, there's not a lot of thanks um, for being a councillor. Um, you don't get a lot of thanks. You get a lot of, uh, well, that's... Uh, or maybe not go down that road. Well, what you do get sort of, but when you're in the doors, you, you know what you get as elected representatives. You know the struggles that it is and the, and the hard, the hard, how hard it is on your family. But I think in those days, there was that added dimension of the threat um, of terrorism, when just for wanting to work for your community and work for the real area that Sydney represented, that there was also that threat and that threat on your life from from dark forces in this community. And I pay tribute to all those, and indeed. Um, the gentleman to my right, Councillor um, Alderman Twaybill and um, <clears throat> Alderman Spears as well. In those dark days when there wasn't really, there was no pay for being a councillor, you'd done it for the love of your community, but you also done it with the threat of violence when you had to go out into the car park at night and check onto your car and all those things. And I think, you know, l looking at that, they really, it just proves that they did it for the love of their community and for the love of their people. So really just to pay tribute to Sydney, um, and all those who are leaving um, this place on behalf of our party, to Alderman Twible, who I've again known since 2011. And as you have said, um, Lord Mayor, any time that you're with Alderman Twible, somebody will come up and say, he taught me when I was first elected here. My brother-in-law actually said to me, is uh, Kenny Twible still there? You know, he taught me, <laughs> you know, 20 years ago or whatever it was, you know, so certainly a very well-known um, individual. And, Always respect, and I think anybody who ever mentions Alderman Twible will always say, gentlemen, Alderman Twible. Um, and as always been, I've never heard a crossword out of Alderman Twible's um, mouth in this place. Um, we haven't always agreed, obviously, politically and in votes and things, but always, um, always very nice and very pleasant and always very courteous to me um, as a councillor um, over the years. Well, Alderman Spears, um, again, we haven't always seen IDI, but like Alderman Anderson, I think, an old school unionist with old school unionist values, who has given a lifetime of service to his people to the detriment probably of other things that he could have been doing. And I have no doubt as um, Alderman Spears and Alderman, um, all the Aldermen and all the councillors leave, um, this place, they will, they will miss it, but their experience will be missed in this chamber. Um, and be missed by their parties. So, look, again, just to all those that are leaving on behalf of our party, um, I wish you all the best. And I'm sure you won't be strangers and you'll always be there for, for any advice that's needed by your colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Baxter and Councillor O'Hanlon. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. suppose the tone of tonight is uh, politics is a, is a funny game. If you listen to, to Nolan or read RMRA or indeed follow the media in general, you'll be led to believe that politics is a nasty game, that you come reeking through those doors behind us night in, night out, and gut each other from start to finish, and that we have a vile hatred for one another. But thankfully, when you come through those doors as a councillor, you realise that politics and indeed politicians aren't like that. The general public might be surprised to see how well we get on together, that we really do work well together in the common interest. Okay, we enjoyed a good debate and a bit of banter, but that's what it's about. So, Lord Mayor, on behalf of the SDLP, can I lead the tributes to distinguished colleagues who decided not to seek re-election? And again, I'll name them like others. So, Alderman Anderson, Alderman Spears, Alderman Twible. Councillor Pope, Councillor Jackie Donnelly, Councillor Darren McNally, and indeed my own colleague, Councillor Larkham. Each of you have given our community hours and in some cases, uh, years of service. May your retirement be long, happy and healthy. And for those of you with families, be that children, grandchildren, or possibly even great grandchildren, enjoy every minute you can with them. If this term on council has taught us anything, it's been to value the time we spend with one another. 
In particular, I want to wish my own colleague, Councillor Larkham, all the very best for the future. As you said, Lord Mayor, Thomas joined our team four years ago and has been a tenacious voice for the people of Craigavon. I know he can be immensely proud of his work in the area, and in particular with the Save Craigavon City Park and Lakes campaign. He was rooted in community development and community politics, and I know he has been a strong advocate for the entire community. And whatever he turns his hand to in the future, he will do so with the same grit and determination as he did in political life. I hope to see him back on the, the benches here again soon. Uh, but in the interim, I'd say my message to him is to enjoy every moment with his pride and joy in his daughter, Rosa. Lord Mayor, I hope you don't mind. I'm not going to go through every single member, but I'm going to single out two other representatives for a special mention. Firstly, uh, Councillor McNally. Darren has been a colleague, firstly in Crossmoor and laterally in the RMRDEA for 15 years. We worked together on many issues and projects, and I always found Darren to be decent, straight, and rooted in our community. Darren was always quiet and hardworking. And what's unique about two re representatives in the one town chasing the one demographic we never engaged in political point scoring with one another, never had a row, and always had a respect for one another. I've always admired the way he went about his work, his work with Kitty first responders, um, and indeed providing food parcels during the pandemic has won him praise, and rightly so. I wish Darren, his partner Karen, and their family all the very best for the future. I suppose lastly, but by no means least, Alderman Spears. What way do you wrap up 46 years of political life? Jim has been an elected representative more than some of us in this chamber have been alive. And you could say he's got legendary status. From what I hear, he was a bit of a firebrand back in the day. But like many before him and since, time has tamed him. We all have our Jim Spears stories. And when he starts to speak in here, we all listen. Most of us, his own colleagues included, are waiting to hear what's coming next. We're thinking, is he going, where's he going with this as we all roll our eyes? The story often starts with, everything has been said, but not everyone has said it. Or how he was involved at the inception of a project and how it all started over a meeting with him. I remember, like you, Lord, and my first encounter with Jim, I introduced, introduced myself as Thomas O'Hanlon. Right young fella, he said, he knew my pedigree, he knew where I was from, he had tea in the house up the road, and he called me Tommy from that day on. In fact, Jim and Elizabeth travelled to Mayo to join some of my closest family and friends at our wedding. Only for him to tell me later that it takes you pips an awful time to get married. I don't know if he was referring to the wedding ceremony or the fact that he was away from home three days. <laughs> but I think he enjoyed the crack. <laughs> In 2009, when I succeeded Pat Brannigan as SDLP group leader, Pat gave me some advice. He says you can work with Spears, but when you shake his hands on a deal with him, count your fingers when you get your hand back. But what he did say was, if he gives you his word, he'll stick by it. Lord Mayor, it's no lie or exaggeration when I say, Jim Spears and the, my late colleague, Pat Brannigan, changed the face of politics in Armagh for the better. They were... Uh, they and many others who represented our communities through dark, tough, and indeed dangerous days. They forged a new relationship. They shared power and responsibility long before power sharing was popular. They championed city status for Armagh. They brought inward investment, and they put Armagh on the map. To this very day, Jim continues to be a strong voice for Armagh. St. Patrick and Navan Fort. And for any of his colleagues who want to read more about the city of Armagh, they can check it out at visitarmagh.com. 
Politics in this place that delivers for all our community, politics in this place is that delivers for all our communities when we all work together. I know some on the bench is opposite. And indeed, my colleague Seamus Doyle jibed and laughed when they said the old armor axis appeared again. Or as one said it, Spears and O'Hanlon are at it again. But if by our working together, we have made this a better place, well then, I'm happy with that. In life, when we leave a role, we seek to leave a legacy. And for Jim, I think he can have no better legacy than a politics that works, that reaches out across communities, and that delivers for everyone. Jim, as you step back and enjoy retirement, I wish you a long and happy retirement. And I'm sure you will still be there for colleagues when they seek your advice. And I wish you and Elizabeth and the entire Spears family all the best for the future. Thank you, Councillor O'Hanlon and Councillor Michael. Thank you, Lord Murray. And I'll start by thanking our two retiring councillors. Um, typical of both of them, they when I phoned them this afternoon and said they didn't want any fuss. So I'll, I'll, I'll not say very much, but just to thank them both. And uh, Councillor Donnelly's just been here one term, but you know, she's been a, a fantastic member of our team and had a very successful year as Deputy Mayor. Councillor McNally yes. has been said 15 years as a councillor and a really hard working councillor throughout that time and my predecessor as party group leader. So it was invaluable to me when I um, took on the, the role of, of party leader. And um, so I'd like to thank them both. Um, in relation to the other councillors, thank them for their service. Councillor Pope, I've only served one term with, um, but would like to wish them all the very best for the future. Grant, thank you. And um, Councillor uh, Larkham as well, the same. Um, I know he's only one term here. Didn't get to see much of him during this term, but I'd like to wish them all the very best for the future. Alderman Anderson, Alderman Twible, both old hands from Craig Avon Council. Known them a long time, and we've had many eventful evenings in this chamber and the chamber that set, that was here prior to that. So I wish you both all the very best in your retirement. Thank you very much for all your, your service over the years and your words and, and everything that's happened during those old times. And Alderman Spears, who I've only really got to know very well in the past couple of years when I've been party group leader and we've had many chats and discussions over that time. And, you know, 46 years of public service is just outstanding. And I'd just like to wish him all the very, very, very best and his retirement, and thank you again for all your public service, Tim. Thank you. Councillor Michael and Councillor Lavery. Thank, thank you, Lord Mayor, and I suppose I'll start with remarks with my colleague and friend, Councillor Pope. I remember this time four years ago, uh, tramping the streets of Banbridge with Brian uh, and those rainy nights, and it always seemed to rain right in Banbridge then. Um, trying to get the seat and I remember the count fondly although I went home to get some sleep because Roger told us it was finishing and I was ready to be back at 8 in the morning only to wake up from a text from Brian about 5 in the morning to say he was in so that caused extra joy in the house at that time uh, and since Brian has been elected he's been a fierce advocate for Banbridge Banbridge residents, Banbridge traders and has been a very positive inclusive voice uh, for council and has of relationships across political parties, I think we'd all agree. Certainly as a loss to our party group and myself, Jessica and Owen, uh, that Brian chose to step down. Um, I do very much wish him all the best and his wife and children as uh, for, for all of the future endeavours. Um, and do really want to thank him for all the work he did for people at Banbridge and, and the Lance. Uh, in terms of uh, all the other members, I'd just on behalf of the party, I'd like to wish them well, Alderman Twible, Alderman Anderson, Alderman Spears, Councillor Jackie Donnelly, uh, Councillor McNally, and Councillor Larkham. I know I've had various conversations, agreements, and maybe even one or two disagreements over the years uh, with some of those members, but um, I think generally and we all very much worked well together. And as some members have said, we've, we've been able to get a lot of work done over this mandate. So to yourselves and to all your families, I wish you well uh, in the many years ahead. I'd just like to take this opportunity as we are at the end of the mandate to thank all of the officers uh, who've worked with us in the past number of years and that they've been able to help 
um, the residents of the borough, particularly over the COVID pandemic. And even um, I'm thinking in terms of Brian's year's economic development chair in the year just after COVID, it was a very intense time, particularly for those businesses when many businesses were facing uncertainty. I think Brian's chairmanship of the economic development committee at that time really did um, help many residents and businesses at that, uh, at that fairly crucial period. So put that on record, Chair. Thank you very much. Maybe we'll see you in June. Thank you, Councillor Lavery, and uh, we have Councillor Barry. Thank, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, and I would just like to concur with all of the remarks that have been made about all of those councillors and older men that are that are not seeking re-election in May, and I would like to wish them all the very best and their families in the future. But uh, as one who has served for 22 years with Alderman Spears, I think it would be very important that I would would, would make comment in relation to his early retirement after 46 years. Uh, <laughs> in every meeting, I think Thomas O'Hanlon had referred to it, there were many, many meetings in Armagh City and District, and even these meetings were something would have been happening or something would have been said, and Jim would have been about to speak, and you were sitting back thinking, what is Spears playing at here? There was always, there was always that suspicion of what sort of a plan he had concocted uh, but obviously everything was for the benefit of the council, of course. But Jim, uh, in fairness, it was a pleasure for me to serve along with Jim uh, from 2001 in the old Legacy Council and then in ABC. At that stage, he was an orchard in the Orchard Ward, but then in the ABC, then he moved over to the Cusher. So it became more pressure when we were fighting elections together, along with Alderman Wilson and, and, and Alderman Kennedy. But I had always found Jim... And we agreed a lot, lot more than we disagreed down through those years. I had always found Jim as a man of great ability, a man who was clearly committed to the work that he stood for. He was a man of principle and a man who, in my view, was a traditional unionist. Maybe he didn't wave it about, but he was a traditional, traditional proud unionist. And he believed in the union and all it would deliver. And I have said to many, many people over the years, right up until recently, that Jim has lived, ate, slept and drank politics because he loves, he loved his role as a councillor for, for all those 46 years. And I could see that and many councillors who served with him over those 20 odd years could see the passion he had uh, for the council and for delivery for the area in Jellern. And he always reminded us that uh, when it was coming up to elections, uh, he would have said, young Barry or whoever was starting around, every day is an election. And that was honestly right with Jim, because no matter where you went, he always was talking to people and was always out there and was always good at communicating with, with people. But his long service was just not for himself, because he sacrificed much in that of his family because of the time and commitment that he gave to council. And he has much to be proud of. And I have no doubt he is very proud, but his family is proud and no doubt his grandchildren, when they continue to read more about him, they will be proud of the long years of service that he has given, uh, not just to the wards that he represented, but to the corporate body as a council, because there were difficult times, there were difficult decisions to be made. But Jim was always one of those ones who was selfless, who was looking at it uh, in the long term goal to see how this would benefit the council area as a corporate body. And he was always a strategic thinker in that case. Great ambassador for the area and the chamber, I have no doubt we'll miss him. It'll be a different chamber if for those of us who are standing, if we're, we're honoured to be elected again, it will be a different a chamber in the future. But I would like to sincerely thank Jim, not just as a councillor, but as a friend, for all his, his commitment, his wisdom, his advice down through those years to me and to others. He's been a friend to me in good times and bad times. And I think that's the important thing because that's when you find out who a true friend is, no matter what political divide they come from, because we all face difficulties, but Jim was always there. And I would like to thank Jim from the bottom of my heart for always being there and wish him and Elizabeth and his family Godrich's blessings in the days ahead. 
Thank you, Councillor Barry and Councillor Nicholson. Yeah, thanks, Lord Mayor, and and I too will concur everything that has been said thus far about everybody. I think we all know it's politics can be a very lonely place. It's a tough, tough thing to stick your face on a poster and put in a poll and ask the, the public to trust you and hopefully you can deliver for them. But I think um a, a, a number of those a, the, all those people tonight named, um, I'm not gonna name them again because we all know who they are, but they have done the best for their communities and they've given a service to the borough, especially in this last term, which we could spend through COVID. We all had two years of pure hell. And obviously we had to, if you like, deal with our communities during that and then also try to rebuild our economy when we come out of it. So obviously I wish all those councillors that are not seeking an election um, all the best and their families and whatever their next um, endeavour in life, I, I wish them well with that as well. Um, Lord Mayor, I've been given the inevitable task to try and sum up 46 years of service, this man beside me. Um, and uh, of those 46 years, I've known him quite a bit of it, I have to say. But I did promise him and say I wouldn't tell too, tell too many secrets. Um, but look, th th there's no doubt this man beside me um, has been a public servant. And that honour, you said it yourself, Lord Mayor, was bestowed on in the millennium. He got the MBE for service to local government. Um, going back, Lord Mayor, he was elected to Armagh City, Arma City Council in 1977 um, for our party. And he was also elected to the Assembly, which he served until it was abolished in 1986. So his life was about politics, Lord Mayor. Throughout his time, he served in many boards, boards both locally and regionally, ensuring that our community had a voice in all aspects of life. He was a former chairperson of the Ulster Unionist Party New Union Armagh Constituent Association and is currently still a trustee of the Ulster Unionist Party in Northern Ireland. Jim has been a dedicated councillor and a staunch champion of local government, serving in both NILGA and the NAC committees, promoting local government at all, at all times in Northern Ireland. Jim held the position of mayor on two occasions and has served in most of all our council committees. He's respected by councillors and officers alike and to indeed all that know him or work with him. Jim's committed and robust in his unionism, but was always willing to work with everyone throughout his political career to benefit all our community in Northern Ireland. Jim is a man of integrity and a dedicated public servant, representing his constituents with distinction, and his first instinct was to think of others rather than himself. Jim is a pr pragmatic politician with a fine-tuned sense of wit. And of course, we will never forget the one-liners many of us have all heard in this chamber, and many we've heard tonight as well. Jim, is, Jim has many achievements which have given him great pride at local level. And I have to be honest, Lord Mayor, um, if I was to list them all, we'd be here all night. But I'm going to give you a bit of a touch. The first one here was obviously, as was mentioned by, by Councillor Hanlon, the successful drive at the restoration of Armagh City status. His roles in the creation of the Marketplace Theatre, Lockall Country Park, the Kilmore Roundabout on the Armagh Port Iron Road, the enhancement of tourist facilities in Gosford Park, Market Hill, Plus the success, the massive success that turned Rich Hill Village from what it once was into a, a vibrant, uh, historic place of heritage and history through the Townscape Heritage Initiative. As well as a provision in the village leisure centre, football pitch, etc., 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 etc. The list goes on, Lord Mayor. All of these have Spears fingerprints all over them. The fact the voters repeatedly placed their faith in him election after election just proved their satisfaction that he had kept his word to them. In the eyes of those able to reject or return him, clearly there was satisfaction that he had delivered on their behalf, for which reason they continued to elect him as a man they trusted to represent their interests. First in Armagh District Council and later as a member of Armagh City, Bambridge and Craigavon Borough Council. Jim has been a respected member of this council who brought wealth and experience and worked tirelessly for all the community, as well as the interests of business across the country in his role as our group leader. From a farming and business background, Jim fully understood the issues facing the rural community and the agricultural industry. 
Jim has worked with all stakeholders to strengthen and support the local agricultural industry, striving to improve the local employment opportunities to support a vibrant economy. His passion result in the recently published agricultural strategy for this council. Jim has always believed that it's not necessary to weaken the strong in order to strengthen the weak. Jim is one of life's good guys, who we as a group have had a privilege to work closely with over the last two terms in ABC Council. We have all looked up to him so much in the way he conducted himself in public life, especially in how he managed challenging situations in which we've all been in this chamber. Jim is a cut above the rest and in many situations proven to be the only sensible voice in the room. As a group leader, Jim has been a mentor and a leader to all of us in the Austin Union's group, and we all have had the benefit of his counsel. Everything we are and everything we'll ever be in politics will have been aided by, by the support we received from Jim. He was never frightened to give us all a push in the right direction. Jim has given all his political life to help and benefit the entire community, and he has lived his political life under the mantra to serve as my to serve as my duty and to serve well as my pleasure. On a personal level, I want to thank Jim. He's been a family friend for a long time and a good colleague and a friend of my father. From the young unionist days right up to the present and the time they spent in Armagh Council. Jim will be greatly missed on behalf of our group and council and we thank you for your vision, your loyalty and your service. Jim has many interests outside of politics and I know he wants to travel and spend more time now with his extended family. Jim, we and your Austin Unionist family wish you both wish you um both you, Jim, Elizabeth, and all your family all the best in the next chapter of your lives. You, Councillor Nicholson and Councillor Flaggerty. Oh, thank you very much, Lord Mayor. And I know Councillor O'Hanlon. You're, I know what you're saying. I'm near set off already. I was asked when I walked into the building this evening, are there going to be tears? I, I can guarantee you there will, because it's my, honestly, my privilege to pay tribute to my friend, Kenneth Twybel. But just before um, I start, because um, a lot have been said already, to all of those not seeking re-election for whatever reason, may you find all you wish for in the future. Uh, and some of you may look forward to a happy, uh, healthy retirement from elected politics. Uh, but perhaps there are some we may hear from again. I, I have to concur with the remarks made by others in this chamber. Um, but I, I know that some will be fearful of what I may say. But we'll, we'll give it a go. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, tonight, 24th of April, Alderman Kenneth Tribal has taken his seat for the last time in ABC Council. He does so on the back of a lifetime of service, which started way back in 1993. Kenneth, as has been said, has served diligently uh, as Lord Mayor, as a mayor twice and a deputy mayor once. Um, and it would actually be much simpler to list the committees and organisations that he hasn't been part of uh, over a lifetime of service spanning 30 years. He has achieved all of this while serving as a dedicated teacher, as has been said, for 37 years in Kilgamean Junior High School, 10 of those as vice principal. And I think as it has been said, there is virtually no one you will speak to in this area that does not know Kenneth from Kilgamean School. So as the Ulster Unionist Party say farewell to Kenneth from elected politics, I know I speak for all of my colleagues when I personally reflect on an alderman a mentor, a friend, and someone who I have the utmost of respect for. It wouldn't be like me not to be personal, but I, I just, I, forgive me, Lord Mayor, it's so important about Kenneth. I've known Kenneth all of my life, literally all of my life. Word is he was uh, at my christening and when I was a child in Edenderry Methodist Church. He taught me at school to Kenneth, not all the Latin stuck, but we're, we're, still, we're still trying. Kenneth also, as some of you may know, uh, supported my family uh, through the church, throughout Jake's short life, attended his christening and his funeral. He put a supportive arm around me when I first made the leap into elected politics. Him and I walked and drove the roads around his beloved Craig Avon DEA, and he has supported me ever since. Kenneth has shaped so many of us in the Ulster Unionist Party over so many years, 
without probably ever really knowing it. His wise words, calm nature and faith will perhaps be more necessary than ever as we move into a new mandate without him. In the Ulster Unionist Party, we are very fortunate to have a growing group of new candidates who will, I am certain, sure, Kenneth, need your sage advice and it'll be very much needed and appreciated for a long time yet. Alderman Kenneth Tribal is just one of a kind. We will miss you dreadfully, Kenneth. Much love and good health to you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fackerley, and we have Councillor Midray, okay, Midray. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, in the interest of uh, time, I know we all uh, have other things to do, um, but I will keep these comments brief and I will focus them solely on uh, my colleague, Alderman Anderson, but I would like to uh, wish the absolute best to everyone who is not seeking re-election. Um, time and time again, the people of Portadown and indeed Upper Ban have placed their trust in Alderman Sidney Anderson, and to me, it's easy to see why. Throughout his 20 plus year career in politics, Alderman Anderson has been a faithful, hardworking representative who cares deeply about the people he represents. As the youngest unionist on council, I thank Alderman Anderson for being an encourager to the next generation. Alderman Anderson gave Jonathan Buckley his start in politics and he has been an ever present source of advice and counsel for me in my brief time here. On a personal level, I have always admired Alderman Anderson for his conviction and willingness to stand up for what he believes in, rather than doing what's politically expedient. Um, Sydney has fought many elections, but I think his biggest challenge was reminding people time and time again that he is Sydney with a Y and not with an I. I wish the very best to Sydney, to Brenda, his daughters and his grandsons, and may you have a long and healthy, well-deserved retirement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mudry and Alderman Mudry. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And uh, like others, I would like to wish all those who depart tonight on a voluntary basis, maybe some of us will go on a not so voluntary basis in a few weeks, but I'd like to wish them all the very best for the days ahead and the retirement. Uh, I first knew Sidney Anderson in the May elections of 2001. And on the night that I met him, and it's very clearly etched in my mind and in his mind, we were in two different parties and we met in the housing estate in Portadown. But somebody immediately said to me, that's Sidney Anderson, he's a good one. So anyway, but later years came along and Sidney uh, came across and joined our party. And I have served with him throughout many years in council and Sidney became the mayor in 2009, chaired all committees and then also had uh, a time in the Northern Assembly. And I enjoyed my time with him there because Sydney was somebody, no matter how many adversaries you were, you had against you, you always knew Sydney was at your shoulder and he was dependable. In fact, the words that I would use to describe Sydney would be words of commitment, dedication, most of all, integrity. And uh, I want to wish Sydney and Brenda, good health for the years that lie ahead. I hope he's spurred many years to follow Portadown Football Club and that someday they'll be back in the Premiership. But in the meantime, he may wish to bring Eric and Henry, his grandsons, across to Mournview Park to see a Premiership team. Sydney, wish you all the very best. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman uh, Mudry. Uh, Debbie Lord Murr. <clears throat> yes, Lord Murr, thank you for letting me in and kind of first of all, concur with with all of the comments in terms of the good wishes that have been made to those members who are voluntarily de de departing council service um, and in, in the interest of time I just want to say a few words about th three of those members the first I would have to say to my friend and colleague Alderman Sidney Anderson I suppose in my short time on council so far 
in terms of the help and advice, especially on planning committee and so on, that Sydney has been to me. Sydney, it's much appreciated. And may I wish yourself and your family all of the very best. And we actually had a useful tag team going on a Saturday evening, members, in terms of when some of the football results came through. And it was always a good day when the reports were going well. And it was a very good day when the, the Lurgan Blues weren't. But anyway, that's beside the point. And it's, that's been referenced. I, I, I would also like to make reference to Alderman Ald, Alderman Twibel, who I got to know both on planning and on governance resources and strategy. An absolute gentleman, and, and probably I'm one of the people to say, come, coming from Tandra Gee, he didn't have the pleasure of teaching me, but certainly, Ken, can I wish you all the very, very best in your retirement. And members, lastly, but by no means least, Alderman Spears. I suppose I first met Alderman Spears, I think it was about 1982 or something, and I was only out, out of nappies and he was really on council. So I'm not sure what that says, but anyway, over the years, I've got to know Jim and obviously his wider family and so on very well. I consider him a friend and I wish you and your family, Jim, all the very best and no doubt we'll bump into each other on a regular basis, but thank you for your friendship. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, that's all the lights that have been on from those wanting to do some well wishes. So we want to keep those who are departing the now. So uh, maybe as we go through, if there's four of you here, if you all want to say something, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. We'll bring in Alderman Tribal first. Your light, I think, has been on first. Well, thank you very much indeed, Lord Mayor, and, and uh, I want to first of all say thank you to those who have spoken and paid tribute to uh, some of us who maybe don't merit uh, the tributes that were said, because uh, most of them are fully deserved by this man on my right-hand side, and it's appropriate that he has the last word uh, today. But I really just want to say it has been a tremendous privilege to serve both Craig Avon Council and the ABC Council uh, latterly uh, on my behalf. And uh, it was interesting how many people referred to the fact that I uh, had my career in education and that I Taught some of you, I didn't realize, Lord Mayor, that I had actually taught you. But um, uh, it was a privilege to be in teaching and to have influenced many young people coming up through the years. My entire career was spent in Kiligamian, uh, I think 37 years as a teacher. And uh, I, I suppose the real reason I entered politics was because of my principal, uh, who was David Riley for most of those years. And he had an interest in politics, and he knew I had an interest in politics, and he encouraged me uh, to step forward. And little did I realize that in 1993, uh, I would be stepping forward for a period of uh, 30 years. So it has been a wonderful privilege and I really do thank uh, everybody for their tributes and say that the tribute is not deserved by me because it was my privilege uh, to influence people uh, for good, I hope, in my teaching career. And uh, I think you, Lord Mayor, referred to the fact that I taught Latin for a number of years. And um, my influence there had come from my principal, uh, Mr. Woodman, uh, in Portadown College. And uh, he passed on that love for uh, teaching and young people and influencing people for good. Uh, so it was in the 
uh, veins, if you like, because my father was a councillor in Portadown. My father's cousin was a former councillor in Lurgan Council. And so it was a wee bit in the vein. And it has been a privilege uh, to be involved in politics, influencing people for good. And I know we do have our arguments, we do have our anger and all the rest of it, but we're taking decisions for the good of people. And so it has been a wonderful privilege on my part uh, to do that. And it has been a particular privilege then, as I referred earlier, to have sat next door to this man who was my mentor and my friend and my support and my guide. So I certainly want that he has the last words uh, that can be said this evening. So thank you very much indeed. And can I thank Councillor Lav uh, 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 behind me here uh, for her kind words too. Thank you. You older on tribal, but I'm sure everyone agrees what they said about you, they meant it. And that's for you also. I'm reluctant not to give Alderman Spears the last word because if we brought him in now, he would speak again after anyway. So we'll uh, he'll sum it up. So we'll bring in Councillor Pope. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, and I will be brief because I've, I've only been here for four years. So um, uh, I would like to uh, thank firstly my friend, uh, Councillor uh, Lavery, for his kind words and uh, for um, uh, for the other uh, words, uh, kind words as well spoken this evening. I'd like to thank actually uh, Roger and all the uh, council staff and officers uh, for all their hard work over the last uh, four years. There's been quite a lot of challenges with the pandemic, um, industrial action, inflation um, to cope with. Um, and, and I think this, this chamber and this council can be very, very proud of all the successes over this last four years. So um, I just want to wish everybody um, in this chamber uh, the very best of wishes going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pope, and best wishes to you also. Alderman Anderson. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thanks for your uh, comments and best wishes to, to me. Um, you know, listening to some of the comments uh, referencing me here this evening, I, I'm beginning to think, is this the right person or who's sitting here? But really, when you reflect and you're reminded of the many things that took place, uh, it was truly an experience and it's one that I enjoyed. Um, you know, uh, back in the day, uh, when Alderman Moodley, I think, referred to coming down the motorway when we were double jobbing those days, uh, it was a, a unique experience, that one as well. But I would have to say, we got great fun out of the fact that we were double jobbing, especially as we were actually representing council at no expense to the ratepayers. We were actually doing it just for kindness. And, we, we said that in the chamber many times, but unfortunately, big decisions were taken in other places that double jobbing would cease. And uh, Alvin Moody and I had, a, had to make choices uh, along with our party. And uh, reluctantly, I would say, left the old chamber, the old Craig Ambarrow Council chamber at the time. But as history tells us now, the one behold, we're back here again. And we have, uh, I have enjoyed, even though it was only the four years, uh, uh, in, in the last term. Since being first selected in 2001, firstly to the legacy Craig Alvin uh, Borough Council, more recently to the Arma City and Ballonbridge and Craig Alvin Borough Council, and also during my time as an MLA at the Northern Irish Assembly, it has been an immense honour and privilege to represent the people of Portadown, Portadown DEA. Throughout my time in elected, elected politics, I have always tried to the best of my ability to help my constituents on the wide and varied issues that we all receive. And if I was able to achieve uh, any possible positive outcome at any time, well, that made the job worthwhile. For me, politics has always been about representing the needs 
of the community and being a strong advocate for your community. I would uh, also like to comment on the elder state monitor we want to refer to all the um, spears asked this evening, but maybe I could claim credit and you'll maybe find this, but he knows about it, that you'll uh, find this maybe hard to believe that I was at the beginning, one of the ones who helped to push him to the forefront in politics. I remember going to my door in, I think it was 1977, on this young gentleman was standing on the, on, on the doorstep, who I knew of but didn't know that well. But him and I had a great debate that evening on the, with his own persuasive persuasion on the way that he was speaking to me that evening. I and fa my family turned around and voted for him uh, in that particular election. <laughs> but you know, I remind many times recently and many times uh, in the past, Jim, I voted for you, but you have never returned the favor and yeah, voted yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. But he's very quick at that, he says, Sydney. The reason for that, you know it is, sure you were never on my in my area for, for me to vote for you. So uh, I had to concede that particular one, but he has truly uh, served uh, 46 years is, is a, a remarkable achievement. Can I record uh, some thanks to uh, different ones? Thanks to our Chief Executive, uh, Roger, who's not here this evening, and to Charlene, who's the deputy, who directors, heads of departments, and aid all, this, all, all the staff uh, for all their help and, and uh, assistance throughout my time over the different council periods. Thanks to Wendy in Democratic Services and her team for all their help. And thanks to Danny, and Danny's at the back, he's still there, uh, uh, on IT for all the help, especially during the, the pandemic, when he got us all skilled up to do all these fancy, all this fancy stuff in Zoom meetings, which all of one, all of one Twibel was very, very useful. And he, he really loved it, I think. But uh, we'll let him tell you at some time. And not forgetting also that uh, thanks to Nigel and his team here over at the, at the Civic Centre. And I also thank many others who have helped and supported me uh, over uh, the years, uh, including my family, my party friends and colleagues. Thanking uh, my constituents, and uh, most of all, thanks to Almighty God. So, maybe the last time uh, in, in, a, in a council meeting, but I have been out round about uh, on the on the doors, <laughs> and uh, hopefully, we'll see everyone who is uh, elected. I wish you all uh, an enjoyable campaign for whatever party and whoever is elected may be for the good of ABC Council. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Anderson. And now we'll ask Alderman Spears. <laughs> Lord Mayor, members, ladies and gentlemen, First of all, may I say I was first asked to stand for council in 1973 and I didn't stand, I was still in short trousers and I didn't stand because I thought I was too young. And uh, eventually in 1977, I was persuaded to allow my name to go forward and I went forward on that day and I got the first count I got 701 votes, and I'm glad to know Sydney was one of those. Sydney, Sydney was uh, obviously a wise man then, and I'm not so sure what happened in the interim, <laughs> but in any event, I thank him and all those 701 people on that occasion. And since that, I've managed to uh, remain uh, as a public representative May I say 
thankfully, just days after I was first elected, uh, I said this to someone the other day, and they recalled it. At the count, I I took ill, and on the 20th of May, which happened to be a, a, a big day for me because it was a birthday, and uh, I, I took ill, and I spent the most of the rest of May, quite a bit of June, quite a bit of July, quite a bit of August, quite a bit of September, quite a bit of October, and quite a bit of November in hospital. Very ill. Thank goodness, thank God, I, uh, against the odds, I uh, restored to good health and have since that date enjoyed good health. Thanks for that. Now, council was, as the fellow said, and I've said it previously, it may open your eyes, but you'll not necessarily see any better. And uh, I uh, do recall some very sad occasions in, in council, and it's always, I always believe it's good to reflect on the sad as well as the happy. I uh, was standing beside my colleague, Charlie Armstrong, the last words he spoke to anyone was to me, and he was blown up by a bomb at his car. Now, prior to that, another party colleague had been murdered in the person of Joe Reid, who was a councillor in Armagh. And prior to that, an old friend of mine, Billy Johnson, uh, uh, the chairman of the old Armagh City Council, was murdered indeed uh, and kidnapped and murdered by the IRA way back in 1972. So there were sad days as well as uh, better days. Now, I have always been uh, a committed unionist. I pushed canvas for elections as far back as 62. And uh, before a lot of people in this chamber were ever heard of or ever thought of, and uh, I've uh, been there ever since, played a part in most elections since that, and become involved in, in public life. Yes, I was delighted to serve the community, right across the community. I had the privilege when I was on Armagh Council, I first was elected to what was known as Area B, and that stretch from Pandragee, Market Hill, Laurel Vale, Killeen, Rich Hill, and it was six wards. And in 19, that was in 77, then in 1985, the local government election, Armagh was increased to 22 councillors, and the ward of Rich Hill was moved into what used to be area A and became a five-seater. And I stood in that area and had the privilege of representing that area for right up until 2015 when uh, Armagh City and District Council ended. Now, the happy days, uh, reference was made to it, things that I have been involved in, and uh, I'm not going to go over them. My colleague Sam has touched on some of them. I'm not going to go over them on whatever, but yes, the campaign for city status was something that I felt was a major achievement, something that I had uh, given a commitment to. I received a letter from a young man who had, uh, his family had bought the Guinness Book of Records, and to their amazement, Armagh wasn't recorded as a city. And I got a letter from them, and I went and seen, spoke to the family and said, right, I will take on this campaign. I went to the clerk of the council at the time, who's long since left us, and uh, he said to me, Armagh was a city before you were born. I said, I knew that. But in 1841, it lost its city status by an administrative error, and hence it wasn't. There was four historic cities in Ireland, namely Belfast, Dublin, Cork, and Armagh, and they had all Lord Mayors. 
And uh, thankfully, we were able to restore city status to Armagh. And latterly, we then restored uh, Lord Mayor status to the city of Armagh. And reference has been made to my passion for that area. It goes without saying, I've had that from my birth. I part of it, part of Armagh, and I, it's a place that I uh, certainly uh, like and love and committed to. Lord Mayor, I'm not going to say uh, uh, much more. A lot has been said. I have had tremendous privilege and enjoyment out of what I have been able to do for the community. Yes, a reference has been made to things that various people have done and whatever, but there is no doubt about it. The commitment and the sense of satisfaction that one gets out of those achievements on behalf, when you're representing people and delivering on behalf of the people and delivering on behalf of the community, yes, it is gratifying. And I certainly feel that uh, very grateful to those that have supported me down the years in in council life, uh, people uh, within my own family, uh, people that out in the community, I had always a team of supporters and uh, they were always there willing to help and support in, in, in any way. So I would just like in, in closing to say a few words about how I tried to achieve what I did. I always endeavored to work with those who were around me and maybe look and support for whatever they wanted to do. And you usually find that you can create a situation whereby it's win-win for two people or two groups or whatever. And hence, you, your battle is halved. You have a, a, an ally and someone to support what you're doing as well as support whatever they uh, aspire to. I found that uh, uh, a fairly good model to work by and it's something that that was certainly the way Armagh Council in the city and Armagh and the district, how we worked at that time. Now, I would want to just say a word of thanks to all the officers in the former councillors and some of them still alive, some have moved on, some have retired, but many that I worked with over the years, I must say uh, their support, their help, and again, they're criticized. There's no doubt about that. They're semi-public figures, as it were, insofar as they're servants of, of the community. And they're obviously subject to criticism like all the rest of us. But in most instances, and nearly all, it's totally unfounded criticism. And I have found officers that I have worked with down the years, their sense of commitment and help working with them to achieve for this community, for the wider community, uh, I couldn't thank them enough. So thanks to each and every one of you. I would also like to thank my party colleagues. And I've heard the comments that I've made uh, that's a good job. Uh, nominations are closed at the minute. I may even consider standing <laughs> again. <laughs> but uh, they are closed. I, I know it will be a culture shock for me in, in life. Uh, yes, politics council has been my life for the last, uh, all those years. And I, I it will be a culture shock. But someone told me one time, there's a life after this. So... I hope I'm looking forward to it, but uh, I uh, I certainly have enjoyed what I've done, and I I still intend to work hard within the community. I trust in Rich Hill, which uh, has done a lot for that the village, a place uh, that I love, and uh, I'm still chair of that trust. I still want to sustain that trust in what 
we endeavour to do on behalf of that community. So I haven't gone away, you know. I have, uh, I have uh, decided to step back, and when truthfully, I'm physically fairly fit. You'll find that when I'm out canvassing against most of you and for others. But uh, I, uh, I, my hearing is somewhat uh, depleted slightly, and I find it difficult. I always like to hear what the people were saying about me, and I'm somewhat at a disadvantage now that I can't. They could be talking about me, and uh, well, I mightn't like all they say, but however, uh, that's by and large the only reason why I'm stamping down at this time. I do find that my, my hearing is a bit of a problem, and uh, I must say, but to you, Lord Mayor, and all my colleagues, for their very kind remarks and very kind comments, I thank them. Some of them are maybe Jew and others are maybe not. But in any event, there are others that are retiring as well, and I wish them as well as what they have wished me, and just hope that they're able to move to that new phase in their life, as I hope to do, and uh, move on. Thank you, and indeed, Lord Mayor, I, I will miss it, but uh, there is a life after this, I hope. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Spears, and thank you all those who have spoke tonight. Uh, certainly, members, it is the end of our mandate. It's the end of our, this is my last full council meeting of this term as Lord Moore. Uh, and I just want to say it has been a fantastic privilege uh, to do that. Thank you to all the members who have worked very well throughout the year. We haven't had to go to standing orders too often, thankfully, and it's all went very, very well. So thank you. And thank you to those who have turned up and been there at civic receptions, which there's been many of, and for your input to those. Also, could I just, on behalf of all the members, thank all their staff tonight uh, and put that on record for some of us. Well, we don't know who will be back and who won't, so some of us would just think it's important tonight to put that on record that we, uh, for all the work that goes on from the top table right down to every member of staff and the organisation, those who, who do work and support us. Especially uh, mentioned to uh, April and Susan, who have kept me right uh, so far, and also the team that works at the Palace and Armagh of Ambridge, and especially the team here, who have uh, looked after it very well with Dad Cokes and with everything else and an awful lot of chicken nuggets. So. Uh, but I want to put that in record. Thanks to so members. Just thank you all. Wish us all well in the campaign. Uh, keep safe, everyone. And we'll look forward to seeing everyone at the count and see how we get on. Thank you, members. Thank you.